guys, what's up? Aru. So, Murata. Yeah, this video is just me splurging out with my imagination on what sort of skills, playstyle, abilities, generally Murata's overall kit, and what mechanics she may introduce to Genshin as a whole. So welcome to another video of someone stuck in the desert. Today, we'll be going over Murata's kit based on lore we currently know from the game itself, as well as other games and characters related to Murata. Bear in mind, this is only a speculation of the Lady of War's kit based on the game Genshin Impact and Honkai Impact only. And we'll Will also not be her official kit. Timestamps below. But before we start, a word from the day's sponsor, Genshin Star. In every Genshin Impact player's life, there comes a phase when they will one day buy themselves a sticker or two of their favorite waifu or husbando, and then a poster, and then a figure, up until they give their car a Genshin custom paint job. Which is exactly why we need to talk about Genshin Star. It's an officially licensed, fan made Genshin Impact merchandise store. Granted, they won't be painting your car into whatever character you want. They do, of course, have borderline everything a Genshin player would ever want and imagine. Since it's basically Christmas, why not go with the Christmas Advent calendars, which are not only on sale but are also in limited stock. Each calendar contains 24 doors that start from the 1st of December all the way to Christmas Day, and within each door is a surprise item ranging from a set of stickers all the way to minifigures, trinkets, and even event items like this Paimon painting. Now they've got other really good items which you can give to your friends as well like clothes, lamps, and even visions. So click on the links below and use my code ARU8017 for 10% off on your orders. Thanks again to Genshin Star, now on with the video. Based on what we know, the land of fire and war, its beliefs and its ideals seem to be centered around fire, combat, and rebirth or resurrection. So we could take a guess that the Pyro Archon's kit would be based on dealing damage, as well as a possible new mechanic where once the Archon or the on-field character dies, they won't die but will be revived. For any on-field character, they could gain a buff or a limited time of invulnerability. While for the Pyro Archon, she could be revived with a new set of skills skills or movesets, or a huge buff in stats or maybe both. Natlan is also characterized by its coexistence between dragons and humans, leading to a possible transformation or dragon mechanic for someone as important and powerful as an Archon. A key location within Natlan, as my comments have told me, is the Mare Jivari, also known as the Silent Sea of Ashes or the Sea of Flames. The Mare Jivari, I think, is linked to Natlan's idea of destiny and pursuit of glory before one day succumbing to death and becoming ashes. But resurrection is likely a big part. And there is also a bird that lives within this flaming sea. Phoenixes are sort of immortal, in which they rise from the ashes from where they died. Finally, we have Natlan's Rite of Combat, highlighted from the Genshin manga, and the talking stick. People of Natlan, and Muratans especially, follow the idea of war and combat to this day. So putting all those elements together, we could possibly have Genshin's first quote-unquote DPS Archon. Controversial, I know. But Natlan's Archon could be leaning more into damage while still having a pretty meta-changing support kit just like every other Archon did. Think of a Phoenix-like dragon whose ultimate ability drains HP until reaching zero that then revives with a damage damage buff, and completely new moves and skills, where the moveset can only be changed by draining HP or taking near-death damage. This allows a switch from an Archon form and a Dragon form or Phoenix form, with each form either being a defensive Archon or concentrating on a burst DPS Dragon mode. All these elements are, in a way, present in Natlan and is possibly how the main story will be written as well. Moving on to inspirations from Honkai Impact, the Lady of Fire and War's name, Murata, is likely from the Honkai Impact series' Murata Himiko. Now the Blood Rose Himiko battle suit is centered around losing HP in exchange for huge damage buffs and some pretty crazy moves that can only be described by showing you this clip here. Getting buffs the lower the HP and igniting characters of which they take more damage. The difference from the other HP draining mechanics in Genshin right now is that Blood Rose Himiko from Honkai Impact drains HP until you actually die from HP loss. Now because healing priority and HP manipulation mechanics have recently been properly integrated into team archetypes through Fontaine characters, Blood Rose Himiko's mechanic of losing HP until death is going to make constant healing the main way to support her. But it may also be applied to Natlan characters as well, since an entire mechanic is often introduced through the release of new characters. 
The next battle suit is Vermilion Night Eclipse, which revolves around charge attacks and the overdrive mechanic. Charge attacking builds up the overdrive meter, and getting to overdrive status debuffs your character in a multitude of ways, removing dodge abilities, energy recharge, and can't use ultimate abilities. Managing the overdrive mechanic allows for borderline infinite consistent AoE fire damage. So maybe in Genshin, an overdrive mechanic linked to the Pyro element or the Primal Fire would be a good fit for the Pyro Archon to use. Fuhua is one of the first characters I used in Honkai Impact 3rd and is a favorite of mine simply because she punches and kicks her enemies to death. Many of her battle suits include martial arts with different elemental types as well as debuffing and crowd control. A specific battle suit that I want to focus on for Nat Nan is Phoenix Fuhua. The relationship I could make is the idea of resurrection as well as the bird said to be found at the Mer Jivari in Nat Lan, as well as Nat Lan's disciplines in martial arts. Phoenix Fuhua or in general just Fuhua's moveset involves a combination of different button presses that build up a firebrand mechanic that boosts elemental damage and weakens enemies. Putting this mechanic into the Pyro Archon as well as new Natland characters allows a kit that involves debuffing enemies with a Pyro brand as well as introducing an entirely new playstyle based on a combination of elemental skills and normal attacks. Moving on to characters within Genshin Impact, we're going to be starting with Bennett. Apart from his damage buff and self-pyro application being possible inspirations, the healing from his ultimate is actually the only form of pyro healing and is also a form of cleanse by applying pyro to characters. Paired with Bennett's tenacity for getting hurt, as well as implications and theories that he is from Natlan, these could be characteristics that the Pyro Archon can take from. An Archon of combat that actually has the best healing ability but is also a damage dealing buffer. We thought before that Hydro would be the best healer but seeing from Farina that isn't actually the case and we only have two elements left that may or may not have the best healing. Now I didn't want to include Shang Ling because her kit is hard to put into Natlan's lore, but a lower energy cost version of Shang Ling's ultimate is the best I could think of. Maybe having it apply more pyro could also change how pyro in Natlan is used, as well as a form of constant burning without getting hurt by burning itself. Or an AoE explosion at slower intervals, but at the cost of self damage or maybe even healing for each explosion. Yansen's kit, based on the 5 second screen time we have of her in travail, seems to be more focused on hand-to-hand -hand combat than using weapons. Of which Natlan has a discipline to combat called the Boxing Arts and Shadow Boxing. So the Pyro Archon's combat style could also be through martial arts. But instead of having next to no range or AoE, maybe the Pyro Archon's attacks create a flaming AoE larger than most short-range characters like RISD and Hazel. Thomas' AoE fire splashes are what I could think of when it comes to short-ranged martial arts with wider AoE. But instead of AoE like Thomas' Q and E, it's a much wider arc or maybe even a directional AoE line. Similar to maybe Firebenders from the series Avatar, where every movement creates directional or AoE flame. Another character that punches enemies is Dia, which would give most players PTSD if they see Murata start punching enemies. But an improved version of Dia's kit with a better ultimate moveset, each hit causing a big AoE explosion, much better scaling, longer damage mitigation, and maybe even a big chunk of heal per hit to the entire team. To top it all off, a final AoE nuke hit. Now as far as animations go, I'm thinking of a semi-dragon mode, with claws and fire breaths like the dragon incantations from Elden Ring but more dynamic than a single cast animation. Now when it comes to the Mare Jivari's bird slash phoenix attacks, a huge directional or wide AoE phoenix move similar to Diluc's ultimate could also be taken inspiration from. The Pyro Archon's kit could also have similarities to Diluc's elemental skill using successive attacks but with more variation through normal attack and elemental skill strings, creating combos similar to Fuhua's playstyle but with weapons. Hu Tao's single hit nuke that heals could also be taken as inspiration. Hu Tao's elemental skill infusion could allow the Pyro Archon to change from a normal stance to a completely different playstyle. We've seen Child and Farina change from range to melee and damage to healing respectively. So maybe a stance change infusion to AoE martial arts for an Archon would also be possible. Moving on to enemies and mobs, we'll start with bosses. 
Something about the pyrohypostasis that is similar to hydro slimes is its nuke ability, charging for quite some time and then exploding in a very wide AoE. A big damage nuke range the size of an entire abyss floor isn't too much to ask since we already have big AoE ultimate ranges like Nahida's ultimate which basically creates a dendro house. The nuke could also heal based on the amount of HP the entire team loses, or the amount of damage that the Pyro Archon herself has taken. The next boss we have is Senora's entire Pyro phase, which might have been just a smaller scale version of what the Pyro Archon can actually do. A blazing heat mechanic that slowly damages enemies within her vicinity, creating a scorched pyro terrain wherever she walks that may also spread, AoE whip attacks, and just overall very hectic pyro hellfire attacks during the duration of that phase. This would likely be the Pyro Archon's ultimate form and could possibly be more related to dragon attacks than whip attacks. For these smaller mobs, look no further than the ever-popular slime theory. Pyro slimes throw fireballs as well as create this AoE explosion upon reaching 0 HP. So a nuke upon death paired with Natlan's revival or resurrection story implications is very likely. Now if we're talking dragons, the consecrated vulture's phagocytic form, I hope I said that correctly, and attacks could be taken inspiration from when making dragon-like movesets. Albeit it's just a bird, but it's the closest we have to a wyvern. A possible fire form dealing more damage that's followed by a stunned state after a certain duration of phagocytic form, creating a dynamic between dealing damage and quickly swapping back before getting self-stunned when in a prolonged fire form, similar to Himiko's Blood Rose battle suit. We also have the Eremite Lore Master's Enhanced State, which is linked to their summons. A Dragon Sovereign Summon, similar to the Dragon Companions from the Talking Stick, perhaps. Linked to the Pyro Archon that can be combined with an Ultimate Enhanced State, where either the Dragon attacks with the Pyro Archon, similar to Razor's Ultimate, but instead of a wolf, it's a dragon. The Kairagi mob's Pyro Frenzy upon reaching less than 50% HP could also be something the Pyro Archon can do, similar to Hu Tao as well, which makes the Pyro Archon do more damage the lower their HP is. But instead of just a damage buff at C0, we get basically everything from damage mitigation, CC immunity, and even invulnerability at 1 HP. The Mita Churl's infused attacks that create AoE explosions in an arc as well as the Pyro Abyss Mage's Molten Eruption is something I could see happening from Natland's volcanic nature, and could also be part of the Pyro Archon's kit. Think of a Pyro Eruption field wherever your character goes to, that causes Pyro Eruptions to enemies within its range. The Fatui Pyro Agents' stealth attacks and clones isn't something I see an Archon of War would do, but we could possibly see other Pyro characters with similar abilities, creating clones that sync with whatever the character does, and having clones sync with their elemental skill, normal attacks, or even ultimates, which increases the damage of the ultimate depending on the amount of clones that you have. And there we go, a speculative look at the skills and abilities of the Lady of War, Murata. Again, thanks to Genshin Star for sponsoring the video. Now if you've watched until this point, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and hit the bell for more of my content. For the outro people, comment below, is Murata the Pyro Archon or is Natlan going to be ruled by a non-sovereign evolved dragon? Natlan's current state is pretty interesting since quite a number of Muratans left Natlan and the current Natlan has evolved dragons and tribes. I'm very curious to know if there are still Moratans in the region itself or have they just left entirely since Vanessa's lifetime and just integrated into other societies to this day. Maybe that's why we have some red-haired people popping in and out of different regions? I should make that a video as well. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!